Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Rosa, and today we'll be doing 20 happy words in Spanish. So let's begin. Activo, active. The first one is activo, which means active. Mi hermana es muy activa y hace mucho ejercicio. My sister is very active and she exercises a lot. Amable, kind. The next word is amable, which means kind. Ella es muy amable y siempre presta sus cosas. She is always very kind and she lends all her things. Amar, love. Amar, love. Amo el desayuno. I love breakfast. Animado, lively. Animado, lively. Esta fiesta aún no está muy animada. This party is still not very lively. Cálido, warm. The next word is cálido, which is warm. Le dio un cálido beso en la mejilla. He gave her a warm kiss on the cheek. Emocionado, excited. The next word is emocionado, which means excited. Eh, estaba muy emocionado cuando sacaron ese nuevo videojuego. He was very excited when they released the new video game. Yeah. Energético, energetic. The next word is energético, which means energetic. Es una persona muy energética y nunca puede quedarse quieta. She's a very energetic person and she can never stand still. Estupendo, great. The next word is estupendo, which means great. Hace un día estupendo, así que vayamos a la playa. Today it's a great day, so let's go to the beach. Feliz, happy. The next one is feliz, which means happy. Ella está muy feliz porque ha encontrado un trabajo. She's very happy because she found a job. Gracioso, funny. The next one is gracioso, which means funny. Contó un chiste muy gracioso el otro día. He told a very funny joke the other day. <laughs> gustar, like. The next one is gustar, which means like. Me gusta mucho el chocolate. I like chocolate a lot. Hermoso, beautiful. Hermoso, which means beautiful. Este cuadro es hermoso. This painting is beautiful. Oh. <laughs> honesto, honest. Honesto, honest. Él es muy honesto y siempre dice la verdad. He's very honest and he always tells the truth. Optimista, hopeful. The next one is optimista, which means hopeful. Él es muy optimista y piensa que todo saldrá bien. Uh, he's very hopeful and he thinks that everything will be okay. Orgulloso, proud. The next word is orgulloso, which means proud. Esa madre está muy orgullosa de su hijo. That mother is very proud of his child. Mm. Reírse, laugh. The next one is reírse, which means laugh. <laughs> Dicen que reírse alarga la vida. They say that laughing uh, makes your life longer. Relajado, relaxed. The next one is relajado, which means relaxed. Aunque tiene mucho que hacer, está siempre muy relajado. Even though he has a lot of things to do, he's always very relaxed. Satisfecho, satisfied. The next one is satisfecho, which means satisfied. Él no está muy satisfecho con la vida que tiene. He's not very satisfied with the life he has. Colorido, colorful, colorido, which means colorful. Me encanta llevar ropa colorida. I love wearing colorful clothes. Like this one. Positivo, positive, positivo, which means positive. Él siempre piensa en positivo. He always thinks positive. So this is the end of today's 20 happy words. Uh, I hope that lifted your mood a little bit and I hope you use them. And thank you for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and bye. So this is the one, but this is the one. Hey guys, my name is Rosa Martin and this is Spanish Top Words. And today we'll be doing top 10 compliments you always want to hear. Eres guapo. You're handsome. Eres guapo. You're handsome. If you are telling this to a girl, you would say, eres guapa. So be careful about that. Gran trabajo. Great job. Gran trabajo. Great job. 
this is the kind of compliment you always want to hear from your boss, I guess. Tu curriculum es impresionante. Your resume is impressive. Tu curriculum es impresionante. Your resume is impressive. I think for me, an uh, impressive resume would be one that shows that the people traveled a lot and knows a lot of languages, maybe, and have a lot of different, like, experience in very different fields. Me haces querer ser una mejor persona. You make me want to be a better person. Me haces querer ser una mejor persona. You make me want to be a better person. Yeah, that's the type of people you want to be with. Esa chaqueta te queda bien. That jacket looks good on you. Esa chaqueta te queda bien. That jacket looks good on you. So, what do you guys think about my t-shirt? Do you like it? <laughs> Eres inteligente. You're smart. Eres inteligente. You're smart. Yeah, it feels really good to hear that, especially from your teachers. Eres un amigo genial. You're an awesome friend. Eres un amigo genial. You're an awesome friend. I think an awesome friend is someone that it's there always for you, like for both the good and the bad times, especially the bad times. <laughs> tu sonrisa es preciosa. Your smile is beautiful. Tu sonrisa es preciosa. Your smile is beautiful. Me encanta cómo cocinas. I love your cooking. Me encanta cómo cocinas. I love your cooking. I'm not that good at cooking, to be honest. Te ves impresionante. You look gorgeous. Te ves impresionante. You look gorgeous. Oh, I hope like someone would tell that to me. So that's it for today. Today we did top 10 compliments you always want to hear. Which one was your favorite? So please tell us and don't forget to check out SpanishPod101.com and please subscribe to this channel. See you! Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine from SpanishPod101.com. In this video, we will be talking about common slang expressions. We're here at the Liberia Tar Pits, now let's begin. ¿Qué onda? What's up? Hello. When you want to greet somebody in a casual way, you can use this expression. It means, what's up? Hello? or literally, what's the wave? Be careful when you use this phrase as it's very informal, so you should only use it with your friends. For example, when you see a friend, you can say, ¿Qué onda? ¿A dónde vas? Meaning, what's up? Where are you going? Or, ¿Qué onda? ¿Cómo has estado? Meaning, what's up? How have you been? Mande, excuse me, what did you say? When your friend tells you something and you didn't get it, you can say, mande, it means excuse me, or what did you say? For example, mande, me dijiste algo, means what? Did you say something to me? Que padre, cool, that's cool. I use this sometimes when I see something cool, que padre. It means cool, that's cool, or literally, that's a father. In a sentence, you can say, que padre, la película, that means that movie was so cool. Que padre la pasamos, which means we had a great time or a cool time. Andale, come on, chop chop, that's right. This word, andale, literally means walk, but you can use it to mean, come on, hurry up. When you want to ask someone to hurry up while doing something, you can simply say, andale. For example, andale, apurate con el trabajo, means come on, hurry up with the work. You can also use this to mean that's right. When you agree with your friend, you can say andale. A morir, very much. When you see a lot of people or a lot of something, you can use this word. A morir, it means very much or literally until death. For example, if you have more projects than you can handle, you can say Tengo proyectos a morir en la universidad. This means I have a lot of projects to do in the university. But you can also use this expression to say something lovely. For example, te quiero a morir, meaning I love you to death. No manches. No kidding. Oh my God. Here we have 
no manches, which means no kidding or oh my god. It literally means do not stain when you have to express this belief or surprise in a very informal setting you can use this slang. For example, you can use it as no manches, como pudiste comer tanto. This means oh my god, how could you have eaten so much? Crudo o cruda is hangover. I don't drink that much, but when you know someone or see someone that drinks a lot, you can say this word and remember it. Crudo o cruda. If you see a friend of yours that has a hangover, you can say tacos en la mañana que ayudan con la cruda. This means tacos in the morning help with the hangover. Or if you drink a lot last night, you can say ando bien crudo. That means I'm so hungover. Okay, that's all about common slang expressions, and if you really want to become fluent and speak Spanish the very first lesson, go to SpanishPod101.com. I'll see you there next time. Hasta la próxima. Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine from SpanishPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about top five phrases to make you sound like a pro. We're at the La Brea Tarpets in Los Angeles, California. Let's begin. Pilar con las manos en la masa, to catch someone red-handed. When you find somebody doing something she or he shouldn't be doing, you can use this expression. When people hide something, you can use the expression Pilar con las manos en la masa, to mean to catch someone red-handed. Literally means to catch someone with their hands in the dough. Using this word, you can say Los pilé con las manos en la masa, copiando en el examen. I caught them red-handed cheating on the exam. Or nuestro padre nos pilló con las manos en la masa un día queríamos salir de fiesta escondidas. One day our father caught us red-handed when we wanted to go out to a party. Tener mala leche. To be in a bad mood. To be angry. When you are really angry, you can use this expression to make you sound like a native. Tener mala leche. It literally means having bad milk and you can use it to say be in a bad mood or very angry. For example, if you notice someone in a bad mood, you can give a warning using this expression. Cuidado con Nuria que cuando saca la mala leche no hay quien hable con ella. It means be careful with Nuria because when she's in a bad mood, nobody can talk about her. Be careful and do not use this in front of someone who is angry. Meter la pata, to screw up, to make a mistake. It literally means to insert a paw and you can use it to mean to screw up or to make a mistake. For example, if you see someone who made a mistake and you want to talk about it to your friend, you can say metió la pata con su comentario. That means she screwed up with her comment. Or you can say no vayas a meter la pata en tu cita to mean don't mess up and be late. Again, this is an ex informal expression, so do not use it with someone older. Costar un ojo de la cara costs a pretty penny to cost a lot. When you find something very expensive and want to describe it like a pro, use this expression. Costar un ojo en la cara, it literally means to cost an arm and a leg. Using this word, you can say, ese celular me va a costar un ojo en la cara. This means this cell phone is going to cost me an arm and a leg. Here's another example. Me costó un ojo en la cara arreglar el carro. This means it cost me an arm and a leg to fix my car. Ser pan comido, to be easy piece of cake. When you want to express that a task is very easy to do, you can use the word ser pan comido. It means to be easy or a piece of cake, or it literally means to eat a piece of cake. Using this word, I can say, el examen fue un pan comido. This means the test was a piece of cake, or it means it was very easy. Okay, that's all about top five phrases to make you sound like a pro. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Spanish from the very first lesson, go to SpanishPod101.com. I'll see you next time. Hasta la próxima. Hi, everybody. I'm Rosa from SpanishPod101.com. Do you know what monsters Spanish people are scared of? In this lesson, you'll learn about three scary monsters in Spain. Let's start with the most popular monster. Hombre del saco. Hombre del saco. It means sackman. This is an ugly, demonic old man with a sack. 
the horrific sack men visits homes at noon to catch disobedient and misbehaving children. That sounds pretty scary, right? You might have heard about the next monster. The next one is Sacamantecas, or Mantequero. Saca Mantecas, or Mantequero. It means fat extractor. A Sacamantecas is a humanoid monster, like the boogeyman. This monster looks like a man, but kills people and children to feed on their fat. Living in deserted areas, the Sacamanteca often lure lonely travelers to their death. Okay, here's the last monster, Pesanta. Pesanta. Have you heard of this next one? This is the Weevil. The Pesanta is a huge, terrifying black dog. A big black dog with steel paws sneaks into bedrooms to sit on sleeping people's chests. This way, it causes them sleep paralysis and nightmares. It lives in abandoned churches. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the names of each monster and repeat after me. Sackman, Hombre del Saco, Hombre del Saco, Fat Extractor, Sacamantecas or Mantequero, Sacamantecas or Mantequero. Weevil, Pesanta, Pesanta, well done! Did you know there's a similar holiday to Halloween in Spain? The Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is a Spanish festival similar to Halloween, and it is celebrated on November 2nd. On this day, it is believed that the souls of the departed join the living for 24 hours. This occasion is celebrated with festive meals and gifts for the dead. And that's it! You just learned about three of the scariest monsters in Spain and about Dia de los Muertos, the Spanish festival similar to Halloween. Now, learn Spanish twice as fast by downloading all your PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, pickup lines, business etiquette, and more. Check out the description below and go to SpanishPod101.com now. I'll see you next time. Nos vemos! No. Thinking, but I won't see the next... Well, I was a bit like human. Facts. Yeah. Can we say? Cheat, cheat sheets, cheat sheets, cheat sheets, PDF cheat sheets. I'll see you next time. Nos vemos. <laughs> yeah! Hi everyone, I'm Rosa, and today we'll be doing 10 foods that will kill you faster. So let's start. Bebidas energéticas, energy drinks. La biblioteca estaba llena de latas de bebidas energéticas. The library was full of uh, energy drinks cans. So yeah, a lot of people drink energy drinks while they are studying for their finals. I don't know, I don't really like taking them because I become so nervous that I cannot focus on what I'm studying. So yeah, in the end, it's not really, it doesn't really help me. <laughs> Caramelo, candy. Si comes muchos caramelos, se te caerán los dientes. If you eat a lot of candy, your teeth will fall. I love like coffee, coffee candy. We call caramelo the ones that are like hard. Um, most of the times they are wrapped in plastic. Um, have like two ribbons at the end. Carne procesada, processed meat, 
Nunca sabes lo que hay dentro de la carne procesada. You never know what's inside of processed meat. In a supermarket, the... I mean, the processed meat is supposed to be like the lowest quality meat because they put some flavor in some, some things, so people don't notice it, that it's like worse quality than the other one. Mm. <laughs> What is it that they put in the meat? <laughs> Comida congelada, eh, frozen meals. Mi madre prepara muchas comidas congeladas. My mother like prepares a lot of frozen meals. My mother kind of freezes everything. She works, so she makes a huge pot of whatever. She puts it in the freezer and then we can eat with that like for the, I don't know, for weeks. So I'll have like some of my <laughs> mother's frozen meal. Eh, fideos instantáneos, instant noodles. En España se están haciendo famosos los fideos instantáneos. In Spain, instant noodles are getting more famous. It's true, like, some years ago, you, you would only find ramen in these, like, um, Chinese uh, stores. But now, in every supermarket, you can find ramen and, like, there are Spanish brands making that. Yeah, globalization. Palomitas para microondas, microwave popcorn. Cuando voy al cine, llevo palomitas de microondas en el bolso. When I go to the cinema, I carry microwave popcorn in my bag. It's cheaper. <laughs> I'm a popcorn. <laughs> patatas fritas, potato chips. Me gustan las patatas fritas sabor jamón, pero no me gusta el jamón. I like ham flavored potato chips, but I don't like ham. Imagine, like, I'm eating chips and then someone is like... <sighs> refresco, soda. Cuando voy a un bar siempre pido un refresco. Uh, when I go to a bar I always order a soda. <laughs> alcohol, which is alcohol. Él bebe alcohol por la mañana, por la tarde y por la noche. He drinks alcohol in the morning, in the afternoon and at night. So, a bit it's okay, but just don't overdo it. <laughs> sirope, which means syrup. Me encantan las tortitas con sirope de caramelo. I love pancakes with caramel syrup. It's not very good, it's all sugars, but... Well, a little bit. It's not that bad, right? Tin, 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 tin. So this is the end of today's 10 foods that will kill you faster. Try not to eat too much of them. You can have a bit, of course, but just don't overdo it. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, bye. Hi, everyone. Do you know how to say I love you in Spanish? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. Let's start with how to express your feelings to your loved one. Te amo. Te amo. Te amo. Or, if you want to explain those butterflies in your stomach, you can say... Me estoy enamorando de ti. Me estoy enamorando de ti. Me estoy enamorando de ti. And when you feel that I love you is not enough, you can say... Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Hi everyone, I'm Rosa and today we'll be talking about 10 Spanish dishes, so let's start! Arroz negro, black rice, arroz negro, which is black rice. This is made with squid ink. It doesn't look very yummy, but it tastes good, I, I like it. El arroz negro me ensució los dientes, black rice stained my teeth. Chorizo, 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 which is chorizo. It's like a kind of sausage, but they are normally like reddish. Um, yeah, they put like spices in it. 
you normally have it fried. Oh, yeah, it's very typical in Spain. Me gusta comer chorizo eh, con pan. I like eating chorizo with bread. Cocido, which is cocido. <laughs> cocido, it's like a kind of a stew made with normally garbanzo beans, um, some vegetables, some meat also. It's one of the dishes you have the most during the winter. Cuando era pequeña, no me gustaba el cocido. When I was a child, I didn't like the cocido. Favada asturiana, which is favada asturiana. Favada asturiana. Uh, this is like a um, very hearty bean stew, and it normally has also like uh, bacon, chorizo, also like black padding. It's very hearty, like you get so full eating that. <laughs> And it's typical from yeah, Asturias, so the north of Spain. En la fabada asturiana utilizan judías blancas. Eh, they use white beans in the fabada asturiana. Gazpacho, which is gazpacho. Gazpacho, it's a tomato soup, very typical from the southern part of Spain. Apart from tomatoes, it can also have like cucumber, some garlic, um, olive oil, salt. Very healthy. Yeah, it's really like refreshing, so like everyone has it during the summer. Hace mucho calor y me apetece un vaso de gazpacho. It is very hot and I'd like a glass of gazpacho. Jamón ibérico, Iberian ham. Jamón ibérico, which is Iberian ham, is a type of cured ham, very famous in Spain. In a lot of like traditional re Spanish restaurants, they have them like hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> I don't really like ham, so going to these kind of places isn't really pleasant mm. to me. <laughs> Everyone except for me loves it and it's kind of expensive. Yeah, it's like a kind of luxury. Pidieron un plato de jamón ibérico y queso. They ordered a plate of Iberian ham and cheese. Patatas bravas, which are patatas bravas. Patatas bravas. They are like fried potatoes with a um, spicy sauce. Yeah, it's orangey and they, they are very good. I, I like them. Como tapa, me pedí unas patatas bravas. I ordered patatas bravas as a tapa. Pulpo a la gallega, Galician octopus. Pulpo a la gallega, which is Galician octopus. So yeah, this is uh, very traditional from Galicia. They cut the the octopus like thinly um, they put like some oil and paprika also. Si no preparas bien el pulpo a la gallega, puede estar muy duro. If you don't prepare the Galician octopus well, it can be very hard. Tortilla de patatas, Spanish omelette. So this is made from eggs basically, potatoes and onion. So you can take that out if you don't like them. Oh, it's a very simple dish, but I love it. Um, we take it, for example, if we are doing a picnic or something, we might take like sandwiches with Spanish omelette inside. I love it. <laughs> Prefiero la tortilla de patatas con cebolla. I prefer the Spanish omelette with onion. Arroz con leche, rice with milk. Arroz con leche, which could be translated as rice with milk. It's a kind of rice pudding, but a bit more soupy, maybe? Like, it's not very compact. Basically, it's rice, milk, some cinnamon, sugar, and it's really good. Like, when I was a child, I always ordered that as a dessert. Mi abuela solía hacerme arroz con leche. My grandmother used to prepare rice with milk for me. So, this is the end of today's 10 Spanish dishes. Uh, I hope you learned something and I hope you get to try some of these dishes. Thank you for watching this video and please don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Jabo, uh, jabo. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Rosa. Welcome to Spanish Top Words. Today we'll be doing 10 sad words. Aburrido, bored, aburrido, bored. Para mí es aburrido jugar a las cartas. I get bored when I play cards. Nervioso, nervos, nervioso, nervos. Hablar en público me pone nerviosa. 
Speaking in public makes me nervous. Disgustado, upset. Disgustado, upset. Juan estaba muy disgustado porque perdió el partido. Juan was very upset because he lost the match. No, Juan. Enfadado, angry. Enfadado, angry. María está siempre enfadada con su novio. María is always angry at her boyfriend. Solitario, lonely. Solitario, lonely. Marcos es una persona solitaria y nunca habla con nadie. Marcos is a very lonely person and he never talks to anyone. Triste, sad. Triste, sad. Me pone muy triste ver a esos dos pelear. It makes me very sad watching those two argue. Frustrado, frustrated. Frustrado, frustrated. A Ana le frustra mucho que las cosas no salgan como quiere. Ana gets very frustrated if things don't turn out the way she wants. Dolido, hurt. Dolido, hurt. Me sentí muy dolida cuando no me llamaste. I felt very hurt when you didn't call me. Desanimado, discouraged. Desanimado, discouraged. Tus críticas me desanimaron. Your criticism discouraged me. Decepcionado, disappointed. Decepcionado, disappointed. Me decepcionó mucho tu comportamiento. Your behavior really disappointed me. And this is the end. Uh, today we did 10 sad words. What's something that makes you sad? <laughs> Please tell us and don't forget to check out SpanishPod101.com and please subscribe to this channel. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Jasmine from SpanishPod101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about 10 responses to how are you. We're at the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, California. Let's begin. Estoy bien. I'm fine. This is a common way to answer ¿Cómo estás? How are you? Estoy means I am, and bien means fine, so it literally means I am fine. When someone asks you, ¿Cómo estás? If you feel alright, you say, estoy bien. You could also say, estoy muy bien, to give more emphasis, which means very good or very well. You can also add one extra word, gracias, meaning thanks, and estoy bien, gracias. It means I'm fine, thank you. ¿Cómo estás? How are you? When someone asks you, ¿Cómo estás? Meaning, how are you? You can use the same question to answer back. For example, you can say, Estoy bien, ¿Cómo estás? It means, I'm fine, how are you? ¿Cómo means how, and estás means are you? This is the informal way to ask, how are you? So use it in informal setting only. Using this word, you can say, ¿Qué novedades? ¿Cómo estás? Which means, what's new? How are you? ¿Cómo está usted? How are you? This is the formal way to ask, how are you? ¿Cómo está usted? Usted is the formal register. So if someone asks you, ¿Cómo está usted? Politely make sure to answer back using this expression. For example, Muy bien. ¿Cómo está usted? Meaning, I'm very good. How are you? Y usted? And you? If you don't want to repeat the question, this is the best way to respond. For example, if you feel good, you can say, Yo estoy bien, y usted? It means, I'm well, and you, ma'am, or I'm well, and you, sir. This has the formal register, usted, so it's a formal expression. Más o menos, more or less. When you're not doing so good, but just okay as usual, you use this expression, más o menos, it means more or less. People use this expression often in a daily conversation too. For example, solo de vez en cuando, una vez al mes, más o menos. Tú vas mucho only means only sometimes, once a month, more or less. Do you go a lot? Muy bien, very good. 
Muy bien is the way to say very well and I'm very well. Using this word, you can say yo estoy muy bien, which means I'm very well. If you're feeling really bad, however, you can use the opposite, muy mal. Muy mal means bad, so it often means very bad, but try to keep it short and positive during greetings. Gracias. Thank you. Saying thank you or gracias is also a good way to respond to how are you. You can simply say gracias, which means thank you, or you can say muchas gracias to say thank you very much. Tengo sueño. I'm sleepy. When your friend asks you, ¿Cómo estás? How are you? You can be honest and say, I'm sleepy. Tengo sueño. Using one of the expressions that we learned earlier, you can also say, más o menos. Tengo sueño. This means, more or less, I'm sleepy. Estoy muy bien. I'm great. I use this often. Estoy muy bien. I'm great. In a sentence, you can say, estoy muy bien. ¿Cómo estás tú? To mean, I'm great. How are you? No tan bien, not so well. When you're not feeling well, you can use this. No is like English word no, and tan bien means so well. So no tan bien means not so well. Using this word, you can say no tan bien, pero está bien. This means not so well, but it's okay. Okay, that's about it to so 10 responses to how are you. And if you really want to become fluent and speak Spanish from the very first lesson, go to SpanishPod101.com. I'll see you next time. Hasta la próxima.